Mortars are the backbone of land warfare, but they are not accurate enough to destroy enemy weapons like tanks or soft skin vehicles or rocket installations. Now, precision guided mortars and other precision munitions are available, but they are expensive and heavy to ship. And Russia is systematically destroying the Ukraine rail system top to bottom, so it's going to become increasingly difficult to deliver weapons when and where they're needed. A better solution? The Ukraine military has an ample supply of common, unguided Russian mortars, so a better idea is to convert these unguided rounds into guided rounds by adding an inexpensive plastic guidance head like a nose cone with fins and a small computer and a CCD camera. And all the parts are commercial off the shelf. Benefits. Point one, repurpose piles of common mortars into tank killing guided mortars. Point two, unlike guided mortars, delivery of the guidance retrofit to mortar crews does not depend on rail. The retrofit units are inert, physically small, they weigh ounces, so a single car or a van could deliver a few hundred units and the last mile delivery could be on foot. And frontline resupply could be via civilian drone service even. Point three, the delivery supply chain is undetectable and has no single point of failure. Point five, the device could in principle be manufactured in Ukraine by Ukraine companies, but it could also be manufactured by civilians using 3D printers and COTS parts with software delivered by the internet. Point five, there's a unique PR profile here. Ukraine uses Russian mortars to destroy Russian weapons using a device built by civilians with 3D printers and COTS parts provided by a civilian resistance supply chain. And point six, it's completely unexpected by the enemy. Features. Point one, COTS AI image recognition software for in-flight target detection and homing. Point two, selectable target type with fallback prioritized list of secondary targets in case all the primaries have been destroyed. Point three, the flight envelope der derivation uses a patent protected technology that's unavailable anywhere else. It's applied from earlier missile work. Project status. This video is about my part of a project a couple of years ago to create a retrofit guidance head for mortars. And my part of that project did not proceed for non-technical reasons and the status of that project is unknown to me. However, my contribution was the autopilot for the guidance head and a custom simulation application to test the statistical hit performance of the autopilots. Now the autopilot comprises three parts, an azimuth autopilot, an elevation autopilot, and a roll autopilot. And the autopilots all become active at uh, mortar apogee. All three autopilots are complete and the, uh, the test application is also complete. The autopilots appear to be operating correctly in the simulation. That's the status of the project. Basically, it works like this. We create an autopilot as like a DLL or a standalone piece of software, plug it into the autopilot test application, simulate several hundred or more mortar launches with various statistical variation on uh, parameters that define each launch. And we do that with and without the guidance head in place and then compare the changes in missed distance statistics. And that means the mean and the standard deviation for a given confidence interval. It's a way to compare the performance of different autopilot designs in order to pick the, the best one. Now the roll autopilot is activated first and it has two functions. Firstly, to zero the roll rate and then secondly, to set the roll position. And the roll position is important because the azimuth and elevation autopilots need to know which direction is down. I mean, they need to know the direction of grav the gravity vector. And uh, the body roll for a mortar is expected to be small since most mortars don't include rifling. All the same, the autopilot is simplified if the roll rate is zero or nearly zero since the guidance problem is much simpler if there's no or negligible coupling between the azimuth and elevation control loops, just like for a missile. And after roll stabilization is complete in rate and position, then the azimuth and elevation autopilots begin the terminal phase guidance. And the autopilot software involves conversion of the coordinates of the target on a CCD array into a guidance signal input, uh, which controls the fins to fly the mortar so it flies through the physical outline of the target, and hopefully through the center. 
The autopilot forms a feedback loop involving the target position on the CCD, which acts as a, the CCD acts as a strap down sensor. It's also called a body, body fixed sensor. And another part of the loop is the inertial platform on, on board the, uh, the guidance head, the clip on guidance head, which provides updates of body angular position, velocity and acceleration in a world coordinate frame. I'll post three more videos. Uh, part two shows the effect of the azimuth and elevation autopilots. Part three shows the effect of the roll autopilot. And part four shows uh, some statistical results. And I think the project is interesting because uh, since if a plastic clipped on guidance head can be created for a mortar, it should be possible to modify the same head to convert an inexpensive long range unguided rocket like a Russian BM-21, if I got that number right, uh, into an air defense missile. Which might come in handy for shooting down, for example, Iranian drones.